we'll go ahead and start the recording again. And um, before we get started, uh, and we certainly can take time to, to, and I can bring those documents up and we can take time to read through those, but I'd like to give, I'd like this to be an open forum. And if there are more pressing questions that any of you have, uh, anything that you would like to, um, uh, to discuss, then, then let's, let's dive into those before we really dive into any of these documents. Todd, I'd like to ask that everybody kind of introduce themselves, where they're from, and how many are in their last Zoom or the last rehearsal. Well, Don, since you had the floor, why don't you start? My name's Don Click. I'm with the Fort Worth Chorus called Southwest Sound, and we probably had about 15 people at our last Zoom rehearsal. Very cool. Paul? Somebody's muted. Paul, you're still muted there. I'm not sure if you. There we go. There we go, Paul. <laughs> yeah. I'm Paul Turner. I'm the, been the president of the Marshman for a while. What else did uh, you need to know about me? How many of your course? Uh, we had, what did we have last time? About 16 people. Scott? Yeah, recently, we've, the last yeah. the last one we had, I think, 16 this past Thursday night. Yeah, a little bit of a boost from the past where we were hovered around uh, 10 to 12. And, and gotta, are, where are you at down to San Marcos or where? Well, we're the San Marcos chapter, but we basically singing out of San Antonio. Okay. And we are going through, I'm, I'm just going to jump in real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm Scott Baylor. I was the president before Paul Turner um, of the Marksman. And uh, we're, we're kind of going through a transitional phase right now because our director has uh, decided to uh, step away from his role as our director to uh, basically because he's got family commitments and just some other things that he needed to uh, needed to take more time to address. And so um, right now we have a, um, an interim director and we are embarking on a, uh, a full-time uh, search for a, a, new, uh, a new director. So um, that it's, it's good to see that we're still getting close to 20 at our, at our Zoom rehearsals with our interim director. Randy, go on ahead and introduce yourself. And as Don said, where are you from? How many you had on your last Zoom call and so on? I'm Randy Stewart. I'm the president of the uh, Plano Town North chapter. And um, we're, we just got in our special masks and some new shirts and we're looking to schedule uh, an outdoor rehearsal as soon as we can. And we've had, we've had around 15 to 18 in our Zoom meetings as well. Scott, I see you just joined. You want to uh, kind of get, you do a quick introduction and uh, tell us where you're from and. Sure. Uh, so I'm Scott Simmons. I'm the president of the Arlington chapter, Good Times Chorus. Um, we are cur uh, currently getting about 12 to 15 usually in our, uh, in our Zoom meetings. Um, we're looking right now, we uh, just started uh, in terms of live rehearsals, uh, started collecting, uh, we're collecting information from our venue and uh, what, uh, what, they, what they want us to do to, uh, uh, to be able to start up there again, so. Um, we're, we're tracking our uh, vac vaccination status for the membership, and uh, once, we, w once we hit about a 90% threshold, I think we're going to start uh, thinking about getting back together with appropriate precaution. <laughs> if I can take a step back real quick, Randy, you alluded to special masks. What can you tell us about those? They're... Uh... They're designed to stay away from your mouth a little bit so you can sing in them. Uh, if you sing in just a regular cloth mask, it sucks into your mouth and it's mm -hmm. hard to breathe and sing. Um, so we, we feel like with these masks, we'll, uh, we'll be able to do a few outdoor rehearsals until, uh, until the in-person rehearsals become uh, possible. And as mentioned with the vaccines, hopefully that won't be too much longer. Uh, I don't recall the name of the manufacturer of the mask, but anybody can feel free to reach out to me and I can get that information. Very cool. 
Mr. Howell, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Huh? <laughs> uh, hello, guys. Uh, I'm Richard Howell. Uh, I live in Missouri City, uh, a little bit south of Houston. I've lived here about six years, I guess. Came out of East Texas, where I was chapter president up there for four years. Uh, I've been on the board, Southwestern District Board, for eight years, and I just recently completed my two-year term as president, and now I'm in the IPP role. And I just wanted to check in tonight and listen to Scott and everybody else and see what words of wisdom I might pick up from you. Well, I'm not so, sure you're going to give me any words of wisdom from me, but I'm happy to be here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Maybe, maybe Russ also, huh? Maybe. There we go. Good transition. <laughs> Russ, do you want to, even though we, I'm sure we all know you, go ahead and introduce yourself for the recording. I'm so glad to uh, be here. I'm Russell Shaner. I've been on the board since about 2005 and current uh, district president. Hi. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, sir. Um, Scott, since I saw that you joined late, um, I have sent out, a, did you get an opportunity to watch the YouTube video before joining us this evening on, on the president's class with Rob McDonald? I did. I, I watched some of it. Okay. I didn't, I didn't watch it beginning to end. Okay. If you would, because we are recording this session, I don't want to, um, I, I, you know, for personal privacy, I don't want to, to ask you your email address. If you would send me your email address in the chat on the bottom of your screen, just type in your email address and send it to me privately. I will go on ahead and um, send you because there were three documents that Rob alluded to um, in, in the president's class, which uh, are, are, are rather helpful. And, and I wanna make sure that we get those in your hand. If we have time uh, after going through some questions that any of you might have uh, that I might be able to try to answer or we collectively can kind of, kind of noodle on, then I wanna uh, perhaps if we have time left, go through a couple of these things and see if there are any questions that you guys have there. So while Scott is sending me that, there it is. I'll go ahead and get this email to you right now. Um, were there any specific questions that you guys had from the video or anything else about the role at all? Well, I'll share one of the ideas that I heard that I think was important. They talked about the challenge of getting new members and having them feel comfortable rather than behind the curve, so to speak. And I'm certainly aware of the, the better and smarter people over at the VM can have you expected to learn 50 songs, but they're good people. <laughs> but the, the, the video talked about instead of having a repertoire of 30 for new members, that they ratcheted down to 10. And then people felt that they were not as far behind the curve. And when we're all trying to get back and do our first performance again that we've probably all had a whole year of not much rehearsal, that that might be an easier bite for a lot of people to try and do. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, the rest of you, are you doing something similar in your choruses or are you trying to take on a full repertoire in your Zoom rehearsals that uh, is, is uh, you might be doing if we were in person? Um, this is Randy. Um, we recently had Jim Henry as a guest on our Zoom call, and the Masters of Harmony, as good as they are, they limit the number of new songs they introduce in a year and keep the repertoire uh, down to a reasonable level just because they can be more proficient that way. You know, and if they need to limit it to be proficient, I would suggest that uh, probably the rest of us probably can take a clue from that as well. Um, right now, uh, we're working on uh, popular music uh, from the 60s era, and we feel like we'll get several from that to keep in rep repertoire. So even, even once we get back in person, you suspect that you'll probably keep it in the six to eight new song range regularly? Yes. Yeah, we we may have to stretch that a bit for a while because we have a relatively new director. But once we get the repertoire developed under him, uh, we definitely want to uh, keep the, the number of new songs introduced down just just so we can be more proficient. Mm -hmm. Paul.
Paul, you're muted still. As Scott mentioned before, uh, we're embarking on a director search. Um, our expectations usually for new members uh, hasn't really exceeded eight, 10 ish. Um, uh, I think it was, it's a wise decision to, uh, to manage a modest number, uh, even for the current members as we get back into the swing of things when we start meeting so we can see each other uh, and actually hear their voices at the same time as we're singing. Uh, a, a modest number of songs in our initial repertoire will be good. And, uh, you know, there's always a mix. We have a, a challenge. There are those uh, members who are still with us uh, through Zoom. Um, a lot of them want new stuff, uh, but new stuff makes it harder for the new guys uh, and it takes longer. Um, some of the guys are fond of the old standbys because it's shorter rehearsal times. We, we get it better sooner. Um, and frankly, sometimes in my opinion, although I need to take a survey next time we have a performance, sometimes people like to hear you sing the song that they loved hearing you sing. Um, so if you keep singing new songs, it's like, oh shoot, I wish they would have sung the whatever. Um, so when we get back into full swing of things, uh, that'll be one of the discussions that the, the board has with the director, you know, philosophically, uh, where do they want to take us musically and performance wise, and then try to have, have some discussions about where's the best place to take us, uh, now getting back after COVID and then uh, later on. So that, that brings up a good point. And I wanted to ask you guys, in your role as presidents, how active are you in working with your music team, with your directors individually? In, and are you guys doing anything to influence the, um, the, the repertoire to try to make it more inclusive for, for bringing in guests, which then will lead to a second question. But I'm kind of curious to know what, how active of a role do each of you take in the, um, in the, the, the selection of music and in the, uh, you know, how, how the, 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 the music team administration handles itself. And by the way, you guys are free to, to, un to, to unmute yourself. Uh, there's only six of us as long as we don't have background noise. I think we're okay to stay unmuted. I, I'll answer the question for Fort Worth. Uh, Lindsay uh, Holdy's other half and a couple of other guys in the chorus are a lot better skilled at the music area. I'm uh, uh, somebody that enjoys to sing and I've got some uh, management and uh, uh, marketing skills, but music, I, 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 there's better people at that. And I'll share an idea I have for membership uh, that I'm going to implement here in a couple of weeks. And that idea is uh, what a coincidence I have my 70th birthday coming up on April 10th. And I contacted HJ and Rocky uh, more than a month ago. And uh, so I have invited Sentimental Journey to come to my home. And I'm inviting a few dozen other people. Now, most people are just coming thinking it's my birthday. And I have a fun idea I've done before where I literally buy uh, about 15 different six pack of beer that are made locally and pass out two ounce cups and everybody can have a sheet of paper <clears throat> that beer they like. But the bottom line will be is everybody that comes, we're gonna have uh, two guys from the VM, uh, Bill uh, and, and Rocky and the quartet sing some songs and then we'll have some tags and have people sing because I've got church choir members uh, that are going to be invited and some others and get a chance to just enjoy music. And as we all transition, uh, you know, I might have a higher percentage of friends that are more comfortable going out, but it's another possibility to have some membership and get people back singing. And, so you're, so you're going to get them drunk. Hey, a little alcohol kills germs. Hey, you know, there you I, go. 
I was going to ask, are you going to start, are you going to start lubricating these people before <laughs> uh, the singing starts or are you going to let the singing start and they lubricate during the singing? The beer and pizza will start at six o'clock. I jokingly discussed with Doug, uh, said, hey, how about we start just a couple songs, 6.30 and maybe a tag. And then at 7.30, we have a little bit more. And, and the idea was to, have people enjoy a little music and then visit some more, have some more pizza, have some more beer. But the goal <laughs> is to expose them to a good quartet and have them sing along. And it's a party. It's not a membership. It's not just barbershop, but it's going to be, for people like me, a chance to sing, drink beer, and have friends. That's a pretty cool idea. And you've done that before. Uh, I have a sheet where, uh, yeah, it's fun. Take my son out and we go shopping for 15 or 20 different six pack of beer. And of course we have Dr. Pepper and iced tea and other stuff for people who don't want to drink beer. But the idea is party. And the fact that barbershop is part of it and some people think this is fun. Absolutely. So. You, I assume that your that your chapter, if I heard you remember correctly, earlier you said that you're not meeting in person at the moment. Yes, I've taken the approach. Um, I, I've visited with two or three today, and we've got some that have some serious medical problems. Uh, one is a doctor, uh, and his wife Lily's in the hospital, just have heart surgery. Hmm. So he will not, under any circumstances, be live at a rehearsal for at least more than a month. But my approach on that, again, I've got smarter people in music, but I am in marketing and sales a little bit, real estate for a couple decades, is to spend more time listening to the individual members on their concerns and keep asking open-ended questions. How would you feel comfortable what criteria would you want? And then spend more time listening to one member at a time. I'm not a counselor. I've watched a few TV shows and it tells me that you got to have people verbalize some things as we they transition. So I, I guess where I'm kind of leading with this is at a time where most of us are not yet meeting in person. But I think that we're all, as, as Don alluded to earlier, desirous of trying to find creative ways of, of finding guests and, and bringing them into the fold and getting them introduced now. Um, I, I know personally with our chapter, we still use Meetup. We still get contacts on Meetup. We still get contacts from, Zoom, uh, from uh, our website. And uh, we've had a number of them that, that have you know, come to us and said, hey, I'm, I'm really interested in singing. How do I audition? That kind of thing. And I know that we've reached out to them and said, well, we're not meeting in person at the moment, obviously due to COVID, but we are uh, meeting by Zoom. Let's have you come to the first Zoom session. You can, you know, we'll introduce you around. You can kind of get a feel for a little bit about what we're doing, what we're doing right now. And it's, to be honest, it's been crickets. I don't know that we've had a new guest in, 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 in quite a while. And I'm curious to know if any of you have faced a similar thing and is it, you are, or are we unique in that in that people are just saying, well, I'm just going to wait until you're actually meeting in person. And have you had any success with things like what you're doing, Don, and, and then transitioning that to getting people engaged in Zoom who are guests before we actually can, can get to the point of being them in person? Yeah, this is Randy. Um, in general, we haven't had too many guests uh, during this period either. Um, you know, frankly, if I was a, a I guess looking at a new chapter, I would probably hold off for live rehearsals as well. Uh, we have had a, a female quartet visit us recently. Our, our chapter has gone uh, uh, co-educational um, and uh, they, they were friends with Mark Holdeman. So other than that, if you have somebody that's familiar with the hobby, know somebody in the chorus, you know, it, it, that way you can get some visitors during this time, but somebody that is brand new, I, I do think it's difficult. Yeah, we, we've had one guest recently, but he was a, he had been a guest and prospective member um, like a year and a half ago. And then it all got short circuited when his, he had to move because of his job. 
So he was just too far away to participate. And then it, uh, he checked out our website recently and they, oh, they're meeting virtually. I can do that from here. So he kind of came back while we're, while we're virtual, I guess. But I imagine once we're live, we're gonna lose him again unless we uh, do some, some kind of weird, weird hybrid. But, but other than that, yeah, it's been dead. We, we've had, uh, like I said, some expressions of interest and, you know, we let them know, hey, right now this is, you know, we're meeting in Zoom, here's the link, join us. And it's like, yeah, maybe, maybe later, it seems like. It's not, it's hard, it's hard to get people interested uh, when they, to come the first time, I guess, when it's a, uh, when it's just a virtual, uh, virtual rehearsal like this. Well, I would hope we can continue to possibly add an email loop for these, what I call Metroplex, and I realize the Marchmans are down the interstate a little bit, but I think it will be helpful for my board members and the rest of my members to be aware how Plano, how Arlington, uh, how the VM are proceeding. And there's a sense of comfort that what some others are progressing on and the innovative idea on the, um, the type of mask that Plano is using, I'd like to get more information on. Yeah. Oh, and I, I was going to mention about talk, talking about the music. Um, we we are doing something a little bit different, partly because we, we don't really have new people um, to, to have to try to shepherd through. Um, so our, our thought we, we had the thought both for me better member engagement um, and also to try to get something out there pretty quick once we're able to start meeting in person and get, you know, get some kind of show put together. Um, we put together, Arlington put together a repertoire we call the uh, Good Times Chorus Greatest Hits. Um, and we basically took votes from the membership. You know, what are your favorite songs that we've ever done? Um, and of course, we, we have people that have, that have been singing with us for, you know, 30 and 40 years. So there, there's still stuff, what's for some of us, some new repertoire in that. But it's a, it's a 12 or 13 songs, I think, is what we ended up settling on. Um, so it's still a substantial repertoire. But most of it is stuff that most of us already knew because we'd, we'd done it before um, with, the, with the chorus at some point in the past. Um, so there's not a whole lot of, not, uh, except for, again, some of the newer people, not a whole lot of teaching required, but we're getting those brushed up with the idea that, you know, maybe a month of rehearsals once we're live will be enough that we can get a, uh, get a, a quality show put together. It, it's kind of a random show. The songs don't necessarily fit together all that well. Um, so Scott, but, do you have, um, have you reached out to any other fine arts organizations in your area to see if they'd be interested in going in and, and like, you know, you do half a show, they do half a show and you guys put on a show together. That's something that could be put together more quickly than maybe just a chapter only show with all the logistics required to set that up. We have not. No. That's something that we've been trying to encourage chapters to do is to start making inroads to reaching out to those fine arts organizations in their cities and their regions now, because, you know, not just barbershop choruses, but all fine arts organizations are pretty much in the same boat. You know, they're going to want to get back together as soon as they can get back together. They're going to want to try to put together repertoire as quickly as possible. But I think it's unrealistic to expect that, you know, most of these organizations can put together a 90 minutes of material within the span of a few weeks. But if you had two or three that all could put together 30 minutes of material, you could all go in and share the responsibilities, of course, share the revenue and do something fairly quickly. Um, but of course there's, you know, that, that requires laying the groundwork now before we ever actually can get together. That's, yeah, I, I, that, I think that, I don't, I, I, that idea hadn't occurred to me, honestly. I, I will bring it to the music team and, and see what they think, so. I know we've got we've got certainly plenty of other groups in this area. We've got the the Plano and uh, and Fort Worth groups, and then, uh, like you said, uh, other other kinds of performing organizations um, that we might be able to partner with. So, yeah, absolutely. Russ, have you how how active is the VM 
doing in as far as recruiting right now? I think you're the only member of, of the six or seven that we've got on uh, in our breakout room right now that sings with the VM. How active are they being right now as far as trying to do recruiting, or is it more the, they're they're kind of in a similar situation where new prospects aren't necessarily wanting to join remotely? Right, that's it. They're they're working to uh, they're learning uh, new songs. Uh, they're working on the repertoire, and uh, uh, so I know that you know Brooks Harkey is the <laughs> Pied Viper of new members, and um, so I'm sure he's watching that very closely uh, of the timing to start getting the new people into the system. But are you you guys are still rehearsing or there's I'm not sure whether you're how active you're being with them right now being on the road as much as you are but are they um, are, are, are they getting guests coming in via via zoom calls. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of the guests um, that doesn't mean that there's not a couple of them there, but uh, they are singing uh, on the zoom but they're also singing live now actually are singing live out in the uh, parking lot. So they're, they're meeting and doing that. Okay. The whole chorus is meeting together and, and rehearsing uh, in the parking lot? There, there are about 80 guys the last time. Interesting. 80 guys. <clears throat> but they were out in the parking lot, spread apart, hmm. <laughs> far, far apart. <laughs> Scott, I know that we don't we don't have anybody from Tyler, but I wanted to share with you that uh, last week they had 23 members show up or singers show up, and that included, I think, three or four new people. And they are meeting in the church where they always have practiced uh, socially distanced with masks, but they are still singing, and it seems like they're doing very well. Uh, they've got some shows actually on the uh, agenda. So I know that's a different area out there. It's not as highly populated. So maybe the COVID's not quite as, maybe not quite as serious out there, but uh, they seem to be doing well. I was pleased with them. Wow, very cool. Very cool. Well, it's nice to hear that, you know, some, some chapters are finding creative ways of of uh, of getting together at a time when yeah. you know it's it is challenging for all of us. So uh, I'm happy to hear that both of them are are, yeah. are finding ways to get together in person. Yeah. Well, the and big Scott, thing. Yes, sir, Russ. Uh, I was going to say another one that couldn't be on the call tonight was Eric out of Amarillo. Um, he's keeping his guys together, and they are meeting also, um, but spread apart. So it's uh, either in the, their parking lot or they might be at a park somewhere, but I believe they're meeting in the, the parking lot of where they usually meet. So uh, they're, they're working to stay together. Sure, sure. Well, this is something that every chapter is going to have to kind of address on their own. You're using the guidelines that the BHS has put forward. And so I'm, I'm happy to hear that there's some that are doing it one way and others that are, that are focusing on, a, on, a, on another way. And, you know, we each have to do what's... Uh, What's comfortable for ourselves yeah and and within the rules of the community we happen to be in because i think sometimes the communities issue rule sets that uh, we're we're obliged to follow yeah particularly when those rule sets don't necessarily jive with what the state is setting yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which yeah. right now is an issue in a number of places so um uh uh, you just commented about the uh policy that the national has could you uh, send that uh, documentation to the president so that we have that? Because I did get one of the questions from a member today, what the national policy is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I don't have it at my fingertips, Don, so I will dig that up and I can email that out yeah. um, after, the, uh, after the call is concluded. Uh, let me make a note to do that because I know that they do have, I, I believe it's on their website. Yeah, um, it is, it is. Yeah. I don't need that right away. I'm, I'm just saying that that's going to be helpful in board discussions and member discussions. So I appreciate that extra information. And I, sh I probably should have looked it up, but it, you just yeah. commented. 
So yeah, I know that it's on. I know that they do have it on the website. I know they've sent it out via email a couple of times, and they've talked about it in uh, in some of their uh, their live sessions <clears> as well. So um, we should be able to dig that up. And if for some reason I, I after we get done, if I fail to send it out, please <coughs> ping me, and I will I will dig it up if you don't find it. And, it's on the uh, Southwestern the District website. It's posted on there. The uh, yeah. Again, thank you. The BHS one is posted on there, Richard? Yes. 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 Sorry, I'm going to take a second. Oh, there it is. Right. Uh, if you go to swd.org, that's a good. Um, thank you, yep. Richard. That's helpful. Uh, Don, if you just go to swd.org and go down to the latest district news right down below the heading, there's a link there for COVID interim guidance for BHS ensembles and singing All communities. Right. Yeah. including the latest guidelines from the BHS headquarters. Should have looked it up, sorry. <laughs> well, no, oh, it's, it's a, okay. It's a very good point to bring up at this point because there's, you know, there's a lot of confusion amongst all of us as far as what we can do and what we can't do. And, and so it would be good to, you know, as you, as you get together with your, with your boards and your teams to be able to make sure that you're all informed on, on what really needs to be covered. Um, I wanted to, to shift gears just a little bit and, and talk about the way that you have your teams uh, set up now. I mean, are you um, still regularly, are all of you, you just again, feel free to speak, uh, speak freely or ask any questions that come up as, as part of this, but how are you finding that in this period of trying to transition from, you know, the, where we've been off for the last year uh, into hopefully being a little bit more active, are you having any trouble with, you, uh, you know, getting um, the, 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 the necessary assistance that you need from your teams, uh, membership, marketing, for instance, um, and, and how are you addressing some of those uh, deficiencies, if there are any, at times where guys maybe feel a little less engaged than normal? Well, I'll pipe in there. Um, that's part of the, the Marshman's challenge right now is uh, we had our recent elections. We couldn't fill all the board positions that we wanted to because people's, you know, and and you know, people mean well, they, they developed other things or they're not sure they're going to stay. This sucks doing Zoom. So getting a real um, personal commitment just to run for office, let alone once you're in office, to do all the shit we got to do, which is harder to do now than it was then. I mean, drumming up membership, keeping people together, music, um, it's, uh, you know, marketing. What, how do you market? you know for, for, i mean it's really tough and we're struggling i i asked a couple people just to to participate with the board because um it was a uh, skeleton crew for a while uh, for a while so uh i'm hoping that once we start singing uh well and the dynamic the whole dynamics of you know our director leaving and and doing a director search is kind of perk people up they don't know what's going on they don't they don't want to lose things uh they're they're checking us back out again to see what's different and what isn't uh so yeah it's uh it's a real challenge uh real management slash leadership challenge i can tell you for us it's it's been i mean we we tried a lot of you know doing innovative things and rehearsals to keep up some interest and member engagement and that that helped for a while, but you know what it what it comes down to in the end is what everyone's here for is to sing together, and it's it's just really hard to do that on uh, on a Zoom call. Uh, you know we we're okay. Well we'll 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 you know put on learning tracks and you know all mute and we're all singing the same thing at the same time, but that's not singing together, and uh, you know and then all the other things are kind of stop gaps and. Uh, that only that only you know keeps up interest for so long. Yeah, absolutely. I was a little personal side note. I was chatting with Deke Sharon on LinkedIn earlier this week, believe it or not, and that topic came up when in our conversation. Is you know, I mean, are they? Is he aware of anybody out there that's doing anything innovative to be able to to, to ring chords? Because that's the one thing that we all want to do. And his response was, "I wish I did, because now now all 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 we can do is just wait." So. The concern and some one of the concerns that we've talked about as a Southwestern District Board is, you know, we've been for the most part, our chapters have been pretty, despite all of our best efforts, we've all had to step away for what amounts to about a year since we were all really able to get back together. 
And some of the concerns that, that I know I personally have is that members of my chapter likely in that year may have found things that you're just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do something else now with my spare time. Um, and, and we may come back with, with fewer numbers just simply because whereas their Tuesday nights were always, you know, going to, to rehearsal, now all of a sudden on Tuesday nights, they've decided to, to start playing, you know, backgammon with, with manhole covers or something, who knows? And uh, they're really getting a kick out of it. And they're just like, well, that kind of fills and scratches my itch right now. And so do you, are you, are you expecting that you're going to have a certain number of people that just simply aren't going to come back? And, and I'd like to get your guys' ideas on what you're doing and what you're having your teams do to, to try to re-engage those people and, and get them to get the bug for singing again, as Scott, you alluded to a moment ago. Well, I know, I know we're, we've lost people for exactly things like that, that they're just, uh, I'm doing something else Tuesday nights now, you know, get, give me, let me know when we get back live. And then we'll, you know, maybe we'll talk about it. Some of those people will come back, some of them won't. Um, I think what we're kind of banking on right now is that, you know, in general, when things open up again, there's going to be a whole lot of people who have had their lives disrupted, whatever social thing they were doing disruptive, and that it doesn't come back, and that they will be really interested in something. So, you know, we, we want to do a big splash, hey, meeting live again, come sing with us, do you like to sing? And that maybe we'll get some people who never considered it before, but the thing they've been doing you know, just kind of died over the last year. And they're itching to get out and do something. And, you know, may, may, maybe we can get it to be us. But there's, cer there's certainly been some attrition and I'm sure some of those people won't come back. And I mean, and, you know, aside, aside from, from that, I mean, just the, the worst kind of attrition, you know, we, we've lost some people to, to COVID and, and other things um, to, to the world, you know, and that's just, uh, it, it's been, it's been rough. It's been a, it's been a rough time. This is a, and kind of an aging demographic, I think, in barbershop, and that's the that's been the vulnerable population. So that's um, and that's, for for us at least, of course, here in the Metroplex, there's still quite a few cases happening where we're very reluctant to come back live, just because you know seventy percent of our membership is over seventy five uh, or over you know, over seventy. Um, it's it's a, a lot of a lot of old guys, and it's like. If anybody gets sick, everybody's going to get sick, and somebody's going to die, and that's we don't want to be responsible for that. So it's like it's it's a it, it's a it's a rough decision, or you know, watching people slowly trickle away. But uh, hopefully, once we can get together, we can really ramp up some general interest. Um, we 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 had we had some good fortune uh, a week or so ago that we had a uh, an invite. We so we sent a VLQ to a hundredth birthday party. Um, out, outdoors, singing, socially distanced, um, and they actually got on the nightly news. So we, we've had some inquiries. If we can get meeting live, we can reach out to those people and say, hey, we're back. You still interested? Um, so, you know, when, whenever you can get a little bit of exposure, that's, that's kind of crucial right now as we're try, trying, to, trying to keep our heads above water, but sure. still a ways away, I think. So uh, something that I know that, that, that Paul Turner has instituted with the marksman, and that's that he's having, he's assigning board members to call individual members that, you know, we may not have seen for a little while. Paul, do you want to talk about that? Sure. So, um, you know, in the past, uh, the marksman had been uh, reasonably competitive and some of the folks, uh, who are really competitive tend not to show much uh, during the regular year uh, until we start gearing up towards a competition and then they'll start filtering in and be uh, be on the risers with enough time and we have a requirement that you have to be uh, rehearsing and on the risers for x amount of time before you go with us to a competition but they'll show back up um, and some folks you know got waylaid for good reasons like scott was talking about and then you know life catches up with them and they 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 turn to the right and they just keep going right until someone calls them up and says hey, hey remember us we're just checking up and see how how you're doing um and 
well, I guess uh, two months ago was the, the last time we did it. And um, I can tell you the probably half the calls that I made, people were just happy to talk to someone in the marksman. I mean, I mean, I couldn't get them off the phone. They were, oh, and there's this and it's going on and that's going on. And oh, you wouldn't believe this. And so, you know, they were pleased to be able to talk to a fellow performer, a fellow marksman, a fellow barber shopper, because the, of the intuitive commonality that we had in the past. And it might have spurred some juices. Um, I think it may have in our last couple of Zoom meetings. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to build it into a regular recurrence. And we, we call members, you know, we, uh, we'll go to BHS and, and get the, the list of everyone who ever was a Marshman. And uh, we'll give them a jingle and say, hey, how are you? We were thinking about you, you know. Uh, and if they say, you know, you know, I think I might be able to try back. It's good. And, and bigger friend, if you got any, you know, that kind of talk, kind of you naturally kind of do when you meet someone that might want to perform or sing with you. Uh, and I think it's paid off a little bit. And it, even if it doesn't pay off on the risers, you know, the extended Marshman family, I think, uh, feel better. We, we feel better calling. And I think they feel better uh, getting a call. And the one thing that's important about that too, Paul, is that it's not something that's just your responsibility to do but as chapter president. This is the type of thing where they need to be hearing from more than, than just you. And, you know, yeah, I, I, I split the list up and I handed it off to the board members. Okay, you got the list from, from A to you know, L, you got it from L to P, you get the rest of them. Let me know how it goes, you know, and you know, you don't have to all make them tomorrow or the next day, but you know, over the next week or two, see if you can get them all and see how they're doing. Just ask how they're doing. You don't even have to say, hey, won't you come back to the Zoom meeting? Because, uh, you know, just asking how they're doing they're going to ask you uh, if they haven't been there. Hey, how how's the marksman doing? You know how are you guys meeting together? Are you you know what's going on? So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's important for the presidents not to do everything, even though it's sometimes if something needs to be done, and there's no one there to do it. Sometimes you just need to leave it not done because you can you can really turn yourself into butter. It's easy, easy to burn out in this job. <laughs> well, and I guess that's one thing that I wanna make sure that we touch on and that's the importance of learning how to delegate and, and finding people that you can trust to be able to delegate things to. And, and you know, what something Paul was talking about is a good example. You know, just saying, listen, I, you know, I've got a guy here that's, you know, been with the course for a couple of years and maybe we're trying to groom him into somewhat of a leadership role. Let's let's give him a, f a few tasks here and see how he does with it, uh, you know, and try to coach him along because then you're you're not only being able to handle some of those tasks that simply there aren't enough enough hours in a day for you as president to be able to do, but you're also kind of uh, training up the you know the next next leaders in your chapter in your chorus. So it's you know <laughs> that's one of the things that I had the hardest time doing when I first took over as president of the marksman, I had been a barbershopper for a grand total of seven months and they asked me to be president. And uh, I came in and started looking at things and said, wow, there's a lot of work to be done here. And I have no idea who these people are that I'm singing with. I barely even know these guys. How am I going to be able to delegate some of this stuff to them? So I took a lot of that stuff the first couple of years on uh, personally and ended up doing a lot of those things myself. And it got to the point where there just wasn't enough hours in the day to get all the little piddly things done. That's, that's why you have teams. Yes, the buck, buck stops with you as the chapter president, but you have to be willing to say, somebody may not do this the way that I want them to do it, but by golly, I can't do it all myself. And it's time for, to let those people uh, spread their wings and, you know, I've been in management for a long time. And I guess the one thing that I always try to, to do with people that I work with that work underneath me is just get simply give them guardrails and say, here's what I expect. Here's, here's the guardrail on the left. Here's the guardrail on the right. And as long as you do it within some of the confines of that, make it your own and go do it. And yep. they're not going to do it the way that you would. Yep. And, and one of the things that I did is, you know, the people you can push a little bit 
that aren't going to step up by themselves and they're reluctant, they're not sure they're up for it. Um, you push them a little bit, you know, throw the big trust on them, tell them you'll help them. Uh, and that's, that's worked for me. I've had people say no, uh, but I've also been surprised and had people say, okay, I'll give it a try. I don't know where to go. I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Call me on the phone, send me a note. I'll do what I can. And gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry, but I have had uh, a Zoom meeting planned for months and it starts in three minutes. So I have to leave this August group. Thanks for the conversation. Appreciate it. Scott, thanks so Thank much you, for sir. setting this up. My pleasure. Thank Paul. you, sir. Thanks for joining thanks, me. Paul. Appreciate your insight. Have a good evening. Well, I'll take the chance to echo and agree with Paul. The uh, I, I talked to another board member this afternoon, and I encouraged him to call another board member in talking about the transition. And I reminded him to ask and listen more rather than talk. <clears throat> and, uh, I want to also il illustrate that my idea for my birthday party was not anything I even conferred with the board or the club or the chorus. It was an initiative of mine to try and get some people back and sing. And that way there was no liability for other people. It was my home, my party, my idea. <clears throat> Yeah, that sounds like a fun thing to do, Don. Would you have done that if you were not in a leadership position in your chorus? I, I did it a couple of years ago. Yeah, it, it was fun. <laughs> Somebody else kicked around with me when we were at another event. And I said, well, we ought to have a, a beer sampling party and, and have the different places because I've got two or three people involved at different places. And it just evolved. So I did it a, a few years back and couldn't do it last year. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just out of curiosity, how many members do you think that you that, that came out of that? To, I mean, how many prospects and did any of them turn into full-time members? Well, I don't know that we gained any members out of the one a few years ago. I, I had a good turnout for a party because I was serving free beer. <laughs> uh, and, and I've got different friends from Rotary to uh, I've got some good people. Uh, here's another positive story. Um, I attend a pretty large church in West Fort Worth, Christ Chapel. And they, they seat somewhere around 1,600 people on a service. And we had upwards of 100 in the church choir and 50 in the orchestra. Thursday night, went to rehearsal. The number of attending rehearsal was up substantially. And for the first time, they had us all go up on the risers. And, you know, we were more shoulder to shoulder and 60 people singing some of the Easter music. Uh, it was like back when there was 60 or 70 and the Texas Millionaires. It's a whole different sound and you just ringing chords. It was special. And, and Friday uh, lunch downtown, um, the downtown Rotary the attendance there went from 60 to 120. People are just eager to get out. Well, I think that's a that's a very important point. Not only are people eager to get out, but I think that who would normally be our patrons, our audiences, I think they're dying to hear us too. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we as a, as the district are, are trying to encourage our chapters to to lay the groundwork with other fine arts organizations now, so that when we do get are able to get back, it shouldn't be all on us to put together our own shows. We should be able to do things with other parts of the community. Uh, to be able to get in front of our audiences just most, that much more quickly. So I, I would strongly encourage you guys to, to sit down with your, with your leadership team and try to find ways that you can reach out to other organizations in your area and partner with them because they're in the same boat that we are. Um, I, I, I want, we, we're only got about two minutes before we're going to get kicked out of this breakout room, but there's one point that I wanted to discuss and, and make, and we didn't get a chance to get to the other attachments that we sent out. So Guys, please feel free to take a look at those. If you have follow-up questions, you can always email me and I can, if I don't know the answer, I can get with Rob and find out, um, Rob McDonald. The, the one point that I wanna be sure to make, and that is as chapter presidents, I alluded to this earlier, but really for your chapter and for your organization, the buck stops with you. 
And that means that you are ultimately responsible for making sure that the, the legal requirements of your chapter are done appropriately, um, even though it's probably gonna fall to your secretary to get those things done. Now, this really came to top of mind for me when I did the, pres the secretary's class with Gary Hanna a couple of years ago. And there were a couple of things in there, like as far as filings with the Secretary of State and keeping on top of those filings and how often that needs to be done and making sure that your registered agent is listed. All of these things are things that I'm sure as we're talking right now, Gary is probably discussing with all of his secretaries in another breakout room. But the point that I wanna make here is that you don't just rely on your secretary to do that and to make sure that those things get done because if your chapter does not uh, is not legally compliant with the things that's absolutely required for them to do, there's a good chance that you could lose your nonprofit status. And that's the last thing we want to see happen. And ultimately, as chapter president, that falls to your into your lap to make sure that those things get done. So I'm not going to say that I would encourage you to sit down and watch Gary's session on the, the, the leadership training YouTube channel. But it was very enlightening for me as a president to say, holy crap, I don't know whether this has been done or, you know, and there's, uh, you know, like our, our filing with the Secretary of State. I know that the last time we did that was about five years ago. And so we are due to have it renewed. And so I've been bugging Paul in, in our board meetings. we got to get this done. Hey, Scott. Um, so yes, sir. Scott, can I interrupt here? By all means. <clears throat> I would encourage everyone to go out and look at the job descriptions of the president, secretary. It's in the Southwestern District uh, Code of Operations Manual. And the president's uh, description is very, very interesting. It, it's a step-by-step -step by month during the year of things that you have to do or required to do. And I found that extremely, extremely beneficial. So if you can find it, if not, well, Gary has a copy of it, but, um, and I'd even encourage your, your, your board members to take a look at it because there's some good information in there. Is that, uh, was that one based on the, the, the business of barbershop that uh, was it Greg Hand did a number of years ago? Uh, maybe so. Yeah, I think Gary, Gary put the, the uh, finishing touches on it. Okay, good. I believe. But well, it's, that's, a good, that's, it's a good document. Yeah, that's probably yeah, updated. Very, very handy. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're aware of that and you've been using that one, Scott? Uh, yeah, I, I was secretary for two or three years for this chapter before I was elected president. So I'm, I've kind of got a <laughs> had a handle on anything, but that, that was, a, I, I was not shown that when I became secretary and I, I found it and it was, uh, it was a great tool for the, uh, when I was training up our new secretary um, after we, after we changed up the, uh, changed up the leadership. It, it is well laid out and very, step very clear very step by step and all the things that need to happen yes yeah yeah particularly as you alluded to there are certain things that have to be done in january yep. and you know if we don't do those particular things we can we can run into issues and, and and again the point that i'm just trying to make here is that yes it's you know yes you are chapter president but it's more than a figurehead these things ultimately for your chapter fall into your lap and they're your responsibilities and you know, i want to make sure that you're uh, all aware of, of your responsibility to your chorus mates and your chapter mates to make sure that the other members of your team are taking those responsibilities seriously and making sure that those things are done so that we don't end up in situations where you're having to call Gary the last minute and ask for help trying to figure out how do we keep from losing our nonprofit status for a particular chapter. So, so light a fire under their butts and make sure it gets done, right? And Scott, you are going to forward or the information on these uh, contacts here in the Metroplex that we can maybe network for some more uh, possibly joint uh, rehearsals or joint performances. That way, if we only have one tenor and somebody else has two tenors, we, we'd have a little better balance. <laughs> well, you know, I could, so, so let me address that, Don. I could probably send that information out to you, but I think it might be a good exercise for uh, have you had a chance to get into the new member center on the BHS the website? I guess I haven't made that effort either. So I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm trying to push back, but what I would highly suggest is that new member center is they're still working on getting the kinks ironed out, but you should, as a chapter president, be able to go into that and be able to find the chapter leadership for all the other chapters within whatever sort of radius you could even find probably for the entire district if you wanted to 
Let's yeah, say, for course. instance, that you decided you needed to talk to the chapter president in St. Angelo, which is well outside of, of you know, your, your, your local geographic area, uh, but you should be able to go in there and look that up. Which and, I can, and, yeah. and then you, you've got the direct contact. Like I said, I could do it for you, but I would rather teach you to fish. I, I appreciate that suggestion. It was just, we, I've learned some things from these people tonight and want to build on that relationship. So thank you. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, if you have trouble, now what I will tell you is if you're having trouble getting into Member Center, uh, Gary can help you or you can feel free yeah. to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help as best I can. I'm still not very proficient in this new system yet. Not nearly as much as I was in eBiz or the prior systems, but um, I, there, there are people out there who can help you, but I think it would be a good exercise for each of us to be able to learn to say, if I need to find that, you know, find out who's in Amarillo and be able to reach out to them, here's how I can go get it quickly. I agree with that point. So we are banging right on the top of the hour, actually a couple minutes over and Mark's probably going to kick us out momentarily here, but I just wanted to give an opportunity to ask, say, are there any final questions? Any of you might have things that we didn't touch on? Um, I've gone on ahead and sent out those documents. So feel free to, as I mentioned earlier, look those over, over because you didn't have them in hand likely when you watch the video. And if there are specific things that you need uh, need answered, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to, if I can't answer to reach out to, to Rob McDonald and get an answer for you. Scott, you're going to mail those out to email those out to all of us. Yeah, Randy, it's good to see you. I saw that you Super popped in. Here, so I was like, I'm going to go on ahead and forward it to you right now, but don't um, do me a favor, Randy, just pop into the chat and email, make sure I've got your correct email address. I, okay. Since we are recording the session, I don't want to have any personal identifiable information out on, on YouTube of your email address. Um, yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of fans out there who probably want to email you, but they can find it on their own. Oh, sure. <laughs> but yes, I will forward that to you. I think I got it to everyone else. Thanks. So by all means. Um, okay, any final questions, anyone? Otherwise, we'll probably hop back into the main session here momentarily. Guys, it was really great seeing you. I hope you, you got a little bit of something out of this. And, and uh, if you didn't, well, my apologies. Feel free to, to shoot me a note and we can talk about it offline if need be. But I appreciate your time and, and uh, I enjoyed speaking with you. All right, thank you. Thank you. If you, um, to get back to the main session, you should be able to go down to, um, to breakout rooms and just be able to switch back to the, um, to the main room. Mm -hmm. Leave room. Leave room. There you go. All right. We'll see you back on the other side momentarily. Presidents are coming back. Great. All right. Close that. And I'm going to go to speaker view now so I can restart the recording. You can. Well, that way we get just a speaker. Sure. Yeah. Okay, about to restart the recording now.